Today's quick tip is going to be about the thread library and how you can use that when you're tapping holes. Uh, to begin with, where is the thread library? You'll find it under the cam tab and thread library. Uh, in here, you'll see a bunch of standard thread types. Uh, we're going to just go to the UNC section. In here, you can see the preloaded uh, threads or taps that are already set up. Now, the way that this works, if you, like, let's click on a quarter 20 here. Uh, you see that there's a thread label, a major, a minor, a pitch, an angle, and a taper angle if one exists. And then you have some hole sizes. You have your pre-drill hole sizes for cutting taps and pre-drill hole sizes for rolling taps. Now, there's some standards that are built into the software, but you can always add more threads if need be. Uh, before you go to tap any hole, it's always a good idea to check the thread library and see if that uh, tap or that thread already exists in the system. Now, when it comes to your geometry, uh, you can use uh, a hole location, uh, you could use a point, or you could use uh, a cylindrical surface. And what's important to understand is, regardless of what size this hole may be or what size this hole may be, the whole size and the tap that's created is based on the thread library, uh, the thread that you pick from the thread library. So let's take a look at what that looks like. We'll set up a job here and we'll just get some stock and get our zero set. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, drill and tap this bolt hole pattern here. So we'll right click on our machine setup. We'll go down to tap hole. Okay, from here, it's looking to select geometry or what holes do you want to tap. So we're going to choose select geometry. And then because uh, I'm just selecting a bunch of holes that are going to be the same size, I'm going to do pick and match by radius. I'll grab the radius that I'm working with and you'll see it will pick up all those hole locations. We're going to choose OK. Now, I did draw this for a quarter 20 and the default thread type is a quarter 20 so you'll see a UNC quarter 20 came up uh, it did read the whole size that I uh, had drawn and then the depth is a default depth here okay so we're gonna uncheck uh, through hole here and we'll choose next um, from here you can see we have a center drill a drill a chamfer and a tap already set up uh, we do have the ability to go to the machining strategy, and if you want to add or remove any of these operations, you could do so right now. Uh, if we look at our spot, we have our spot drill, its spot parameters. We have our drill and the drill parameters, okay? Then we have our chamfer, the chamfer parameters, and then our tap and the tap parameters, okay? Now, as far as the pre-drill size, you can see a 201 was selected, and as far as the tap, you can see a UNC quarter 20 was selected. Uh, from here, we can just go ahead and compute, and this will spot drill, chamfer, and tap those holes. Now, if we go to this other size hole here, right click, uh, insert mill, tap hole, select geometry. This time, I'm just gonna window pick these two holes. I'm gonna choose okay. You'll notice that it does read the whole diameter, but as far as the depth goes, uh, the depth is just the half inch default. So we can take our three quarters times two in order to figure out, um, oh, I did that wrong. Uh, our three quarters times two, you know, so you can do some math in order to figure out uh, what your depth needs to be. Again, we want to go in and pick the proper thread. Okay, so regardless of the hole size, uh, the thread type and pre-drill and tap that is called is based off the thread library. So we'll click on our thread type. We'll go in here to our 3816. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose OK. You'll see that that will update the thread type um, uh, both in this section here and this section here. We're going to go ahead, oh, uh, this one was set to a through hole, so, um, okay, so that's fine. Uh, we're actually going to make it a blind hole here. So we have our top of job, our bottom of job. We have our, our spot drill, its parameters, our drill and its parameters, okay? Our chamfer, its parameters, and our tap and its parameters. So you'll notice that the tap was called is the 3816th. Again, that's coming from the thread library. You'll also notice that the drill called is a, a 3180. Again, that is coming from the tap library. 
So when it comes to programming holes like this, you know, you do not need the circle to be the size of the tap that you're calling. Really, it's using the circle for the zero position. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch um, two other point locations here. Uh, let's say I wanted to add some more uh, hole locations. Okay. Now, if I want to take this feature and use all of its settings for these two hole locations, or if I wanted to take this feature and use all of its settings for these two hole locations, there's a little trick that you can do, allowing you to copy and paste your, uh, your tapping features here or your hole features. So we're going to edit this. We're going to go to our drill parameters. We're going to uncheck use cutting conditions. Uh, I think that's the only one that we have to uh, check. Actually, no, we need to do it for the tap as well. So we uncheck use cutting conditions for both of those. We're going to go ahead and finish. We'll take our feature here and copy. Then we're going to go ahead and paste it. And by doing so, what it will use is all the same settings for this next hole. So we're going to just select the whole location and recompute. And then this will tap the holes the same way uh, this other bolt hole center was tapped. So again, the takeaway for today when it comes to tapped holes, uh, how you call the, the pre-drill and how you call the tap is based off the thread library. You'll find the thread library under the cam tab. Within the thread library, you can update the threads for the pre-drill uh, and the tap that you're using and its settings.